cases. Uh, Want to join? Be car 10. All of the details are at WMMS.com. It's a free event. You can come hang. We party in the lodge afterward. We'll have prizes. Mattitude's going to be spinning for us. So get your spot on Bill's team here. Be caller 10, and you'll join us on the 23rd. Okay, good luck. 216-578-1007. Or 800-348-1007. Pro tip, if a cop pulls you over and they hear you listening to this, they're probably just going to let you go. Because, you know, they figured you suffered enough. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. I've got more money for you here in about eight or nine minutes. A thousand dollars courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. Three thirty, four thirty, and five thirty will be your last three chances today to grab that money. I was reading a wild story about the woman that was just um, crowned Miss Japan. Did you see the story? I did not. Even in your own country, people don't want you looking like you look. I mean, this the girl who won was born in Ukraine, but she grew up from the age of five in Japan. So she considers herself fully Japanese, but she doesn't look Japanese. She's a white girl. And so she's surrounded by the runners-up, and they're all Japanese, and she won. So it was, it was from the jump, it was um, okay. not without its controversy, that Carolina Shino was crowned Miss Japan 2024, born in Ukraine, but moved to Japan when she was five. I don't know if her dad is, um, I, I think her father is Japanese. And so they moved to Japan when she was five. So she's lived there her whole life. And she's like, I consider myself Japanese. I'm a naturalized citizen. But somebody really wanted her out. Because as soon as the hubbub around her being crowned at all died down, uh, she announces she's stepping down. Because a magazine reported that she was having an affair with a married man. Oh boy. And so somebody really wanted her out because this is not like something that wouldn't have been known ahead of time. 26-year-old Carolina Shino, again, the Ukrainian-born uh, Miss Japan, was dating a married doctor. She initially said no. He told me that he was getting divorced or he told me he was single and I didn't know he was married, uh, but she eventually came clean. Uh, they initially said that the Miss Japan organization didn't think that there was anything uh, that, that, through no fault of her own. She found herself in that situation, but they said that uh, it came to light that she had dated him for quite some time knowing that he was married. And of course, over in Japan, that's a big, big deal. Oh, is it? They have, <laughs> they have. Why? Um, well, they have a lot of, uh, you know, systems of. Uh, they believe very strongly in honor. It's a. It's my ex-wife lived in Japan for a number of years, and it's a very strange culture, to say the least. Oh, she doesn't gotta like. Off herself to. Restore the honor, does she? Harakiri? No, yeah. she doesn't have to do that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, no is seppuku in the. Uh, a man thing. What's that? The kill yourself. It's for your 2024, honor. Mary. It's Anybody right can uh, stab themselves and uh, disembowel themselves in front of other people, Mary. Yeah, I don't know about that, but um, I think you might be right. I think it might be primarily a male thing. But I mean, you know, Japan is a country where like CEOs of companies will step down because they screwed up. Over here, they're like, <laughs> "What are you kidding me? Like, hey, we just got to fire a bunch of workers." Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Give me my bonus. Yeah. Just sl slash all the low people on the totem pole, and we'll move on as though nothing. So, yeah, there's, you know, long-held traditions of, of or honor. Or they'll step down, but they'll still get their golden parachute of, yeah. $320 million. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it sounds like somebody really wanted her out, or maybe it was, I guess if you're being charitable, you could chalk it up to coincidence that this story had come out right after she was crowned Miss Japan, but... She said that um, 
She thought the doctor was single. That turned out to be a lie. She continued the relationship uh, even after she discovered that he was married. Oh, she was in love. She was in love. But imagine you're the runners-up in the Miss Japan beauty pageant, and you look Japanese, and she doesn't, and she wins. You're like, what do I have to do in my own country to not get beaten out? They're like, there's a 34-way tie for second place. (laughs) (laughs) Eh, boy. So I guess her parent, the, the girl who won, she was born in the Ukraine, moved to Japan at five after her parents divorced and her mother married a Japanese man. And she took his name. So her stepfather's Japanese, but she's been living in Japan for 21 years ever since. And it was a big deal when she got crowned because there were all these think pieces being written on like, what does it mean to be Japanese? You know, do you have to be born here? Is it a culture? Is it, you know, if you're if you're part of that culture, what does that mean? And that's a worthwhile conversation pr- for probably any country to have. You know, we have those kinds of conversations in this country all the time. But this is a country of obviously many cultures. You ain't going to talk English. And some people out. don't like it that way, man. You don't speak no United States. You get out of my face. You're going to talk your native tongue. You go back. Why don't you go back where you're from? People are like, Baltimore? What are you talking no, about? you know what I mean. I was born in Baltimore. Yeah, but you you, uh, I, you know what I mean. She said, all my life I've been told I'm not Japanese enough, both directly and indigre- uh, indirectly, but I know I'm Japanese. Nobody has the right to tell me that I'm not. Now, she is not, um, she is not born in Japan. She, you know, but again, if somebody, you know, my, um, when my ex-wife lived in Japan, she had gotten engaged to a Japanese guy, but he had grown up in Toronto. So his family had, had gone to Canada. He considered himself Canadian. You know, his family was in Japan. Obviously he was, you know, physically Asian. You'd look at him and go, that's an Asian guy, but. He considered himself Canadian because that was where he had lived right. most of his life. So I, I don't know what the problem with that is. But again, Canada is another country that has a lot of different cultures in it too. Japan, not so much. So when they put the crown on the on the Ukrainian girl's head, I, I doubt that the other girls care that she's lived there for 21 years. She said, if a person thinks she is Japanese, then she is it is a matter of the heart. She identifies as Japanese, uh, to put a finer point on it, and uh, we well, have to support. She grew up in Japan. She, yeah. she grew up oh, there. Yeah. Japanese. Yeah. I Just, would think that that country would be more strict about this, though. Well, I think they are. I think that's probably why. You mean how would they crown her in the first place? Yes. I that, think that's. That I think like that's an the entrance thing. Like you can't even submit. I you think that's the audition. weirdest part of it. And then you beat the other girls. Right. Yeah. I w- I'm surprised she even made it through. Well, obviously, they, Japan, there, there was judges. I mean, it's not like it was a bunch of Ukrainian judges that made her the winner. It's people that do this pageant every year, and they're like, hey, that's our winner. Yeah. Probably just trying to bring attention to the whole thing. Sons of bitches. Anyway, it's a wild story because initially it was wild that she won. And then the magazine uh, prints an article saying, well, she has to step down because she's uh, dating a dude who's married. Hey, Alan. Yes, sir. How are you doing this afternoon? Didn't one of you guys just, it's Alan everybody. Tuscus. Didn't you, yes. guys, you guys just run into him I just somewhere? ran into him on uh, Sunday night at Corky's. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for uh, Tim's uh, birthday party. Yeah. Alan Tuscus, of course, yeah, yeah. the well-known and, the, and uh, notoriously famous and talented oh, Hollywood oh, makeup stop effect it, artist. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Oh, stop it. Put the applause. Yeah. Sit down, everybody. Yep. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Hey, hi, how are you doing? Oh, Good. Um, all, just, all kinds of things. I missed the show yesterday, but my lovely wife, Terry, said they were talking about dressing uh, a pound cake up and they were talking about padding and Maybe you ought to you know, give him a call. And I said, you know, 
this guy that I met last night, I told you about, he's blah, blah, blah. So, so I thought I'd give you a call and we can, pl- I would, if pound cake loses, I will take care of him. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> All right. I will. See, ooh, we can't, I but will. we can't just, uh, uh, We w- given your abilities, I don't think we'd be able to just stop at making him look homeless. We'd want him to walk around looking like the predator or something. Oh, <laughs> just okay. something or, or awful, like something terrible. Him up yeah. Happened to him. Mm-hmm. I can, I can, I know people who know people. Just, yeah, I would, oh my, ah, that would be so much fun. <laughs> ah. He's practically yeah. begging. I know, right? All right. Well, listen, I I appreciate you being in the mix, Alan. We'll we'll certainly take it under consideration. All righty, all right. And uh, uh, Bill, you got that uh, photograph I sent you there? Yes, I did. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that that'll be two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. You, you got him. <laughs> there you go. But okay, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, keep me appraised uh, of the situation. I will, man. Thank you. Thank you. You take care. All right, you y'all. too. There's Alan Tuskus. He's a makeup artist, project coordinator, big time Hollywood makeup guy. Lives in Lakewood, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Local just... dude. Worked with uh, Greg Nicotero, I think, for a long time. Well, Robert Kurtzman. And... Started talking about him because of when Mary watched Tusk. I didn't watch Tusk. Oh, you didn't Brian watch Tusk? I watched One. Tusk, and yeah. Brian tried to make me watch Tusk, well, and you I should. refused. You'd hate I, Tusk. I looked up. The scene, yeah. uh, I looked up a couple scenes, and I was like, this is could not be further from something I'm mm. interested in. No, you'd hate it. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely not doing that. And then <laughs> that guy called in and was like, yeah, I did that. That was me. No, he's, he's a very nice guy. But you should watch a movie that Alan Tusk has worked on called Skinned Deep. Ooh, you'll enjoy that. Oh, yeah. you'll like Cannibals. that. Huh? Cannibals. Eh, ish. All right, I got money for you. It's one thousand dollars. It's a chance for you to put a grand in your pocket, courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. Good luck. I hope you win. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win one thousand dollars now. Enter this nationwide keyword at wmms.com. Bonus. That's bonus. Enter it now at wmms.com. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't know that you're going to do any better today than watching Kevin Bacon serenade his alpacas. <laughs> Kevin Bacon and Kira Sedgwick have a farm out in the middle of nowhere, and they have alpacas. And if you follow him on Instagram, sometimes you'll see him. You know, he has a band. He's very musically inclined. A good guitar player. He and his brother go out as a band fittingly called the Bacon Brothers. And... Um, they have alpacas, and I guess he felt compelled to serenade them. Alpacas, they're, they're a moody bunch. This dark one here, Electra, friendly. The one standing in the back there, Kate, pretty friendly. But that one staring at me right there, Sharona, she has never given me the time of day, have you, Sharona? <laughs> Now, I don't know if it's creepy or not for that song to be played for an animal because, of course, my Sharona. You know, that's when everybody was uh, writing songs about falling in love with a 13-year-old girl. Uh, Well, how old is that alpaca? (laughs) In alpaca years? I don't know. No, in human years. Do alpacas age differently? I don't know how old the alpaca was. He didn't say. All that shearing, maybe. Yeah. Affects their bloodstream. Yep. I've been watching a lot of house. It seems like it could. It's never lupus. Well, alpacas, they only live to be about 20. So I don't know how, I mean, on average, I don't know how old that one was. Um... Alan, that story about Miss Japan is the biggest bombshell to hit Japan since, well, I can't think of when. See what they were doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Last week when talking about the Mount Rushmore of artists, Pound Cake said he wanted uh, Whitney Houston on the Mount Rushmore. And I think it makes sense considering she always was on the rock. The crack rock. Oh, pound cake. You guys literally have nothing else. Can you believe nothing the else. level of disrespect? 
Just the brazen and unbridled disrespect shown to her. Nay, to both of you. Oof. Man. If your, she, your thoughts. If she never did drugs in her life, you guys would have nothing to talk about. Like, literally, it's... it's well, we would talk about her amazing talent. Okay, that, but everyone has their vices. But that was... You, oh, not everybody. Yes. No. All the rock stars have their vices. If the, if the rock You're star, calling crack a vice. It's absolutely a vice. Well, it closed itself around she, her neck. She paid the ultimate price for it, so I would say let it be. She paid the price for being an addict. You think she'd addict. get a discount? And I, She's buying so much, you think... She's going to have to pay the whole price. What would you like them to focus on? Because you are right. People, it's an easy, that's low-hanging fruit, boy. People love making that joke. We love making it. The audience loves making it because they like to needle you. Yeah, that's not. They know you're needled. The more, the more they do it, the more, I mean, I'll just. The more resolve you show. Yeah, it eventually just won't bother me. It, it when, and when will that happen? Right. So eventually has not gotten here yet. You know, they can keep going and eventually it'll just be. Well, don't tell them that. We're trying to get them off the scent. Mm. All right. What would you like to focus on? Her I don't talent. know. Her, her beauty, her talent. Uh, you know, you could talk about how, I, I guess, her and Bobby were just off the wall. You could talk about their reality show. They openly did Yeah, but that. that's what led her into the world of, of crack doing no she was doing coke and crack before she met bobby oh well who introduced her to it the music biz her brother her brother her brother oh bill brown the the people closest to you i know right they're not looking out for your best interest ever however i'm gonna be bill houston you have (laughs) sorry what did i say bill brown bill Bill (laughs) houston (laughs) however you still have to agree I've had plenty of people in my life offer me cocaine, and I have politely declined because I don't want to do cocaine. Nerd. Sorry. Square. All right. Polar blast punishment. Yes. He does a bump every segment. There That's you go. He starts every segment. You yep. can do nine bumps. <laughs> Came off a mountain of snow, baby. <laughs> just remind me of that flight attendant walking in on me as I'm going to town on some dude. Sorry, just going to do a bump. That's literally what she would say every time. Who would? What is this story? What? what? No, this he, story. he's told this story where he was at like a house party in San Diego, with a bunch of flight, flight attendants. attendants and oh, okay. I thought yeah, you were on a story. flight. I was like, no. what? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody wants that. It was a house full of flight attendants, and apparently this guy had the best surface in the house for a little snorty snort. What constitutes the all you need is a flat surface? What I is don't, the if flat? You, and you don't even need a flat surface. And it's she just good if it's smooth too, because you don't want it to you don't want to lose cocaine into some fibers. Her voice is just ingrained in my memory because it was a timid knock. Sorry, I'm just gonna do a bump. Like the nature I, of the knock. I, yeah, and she and it wasn't knock it was and knock. wait to enter. It was knock and enter. So she knock would just, while entering. Yeah, and then she just walk right in and just do a bump. And then turn and look at me, and you know I'm wrist deep by this point. And she'll turn around and, go and finish her thing, and she'll walk out of the room. She did, she did that probably like three or four times. Wrist deep. Yeah, that's the story. So Whitney Houston started with which drug? Coke. And she graduated to which? Well, well I think she was doing pot as a teenager, and then she did coke with her brother Gary. And then, fu- and then graduated to what? I, I guess crack. I don't know how. how Which to... one? Crack. Which? I don't know. Which, what do you mean, which? I didn't understand what you said. She went from pot to coke and then to crack. Okay. Weed's a gateway drug. There it is. That's all the evidence you need. Hmm. I bet she started as a drinker, though. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, people don't really talk about that. They never talked about. Her her indulgence in alcohol. They they mainly talk about her illegal substances, like she smoked cigarettes. Cra- like she used to chain smoke. That's what ruined her voice, not the coke. I'm sure there's plenty of coke heads or crack heads that can sing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it ruins your lungs. Alan, you were snorting my doll back in the day. I wasn't. Sn- <laughs> I wasn't snorting my doll. I snorted my doll. Right, but that was as a goof. That was uh, being a good time, Charlie. 
That was me being Captain Fun. And you were just a little bloated, so you wanted to get that down, you know? Absolutely. It was a heavy flow day. All right. Oh my I've, gosh! Can I real quick on the oh, it uh, heavy be flow? Quick. It is quick. So Brian is uh, helping me move in. My roommate gets here Saturday. This is because you said heavy flow day. Um, I started my period Saturday, and I was bitching about being crampy and everything like that. And Sarah goes, "Oh my god, I'm supposed to start soon too." And Brian goes, "So are you guys gonna like sync up or whatever?" And I was like, "It'll probably happen if we live together." He goes, "How do you guys do that?" And I was like, are you asking if we have to, like, turn the Wi-Fi on our vaginas to, like, <laughs> yeah. sync them? Hey, is your Bluetooth on on your uterus? Like, I I think he was joking, but he wholeheartedly, he was like, yeah, like, how do you guys make that happen? Like, how do you sync up like that? And do you like, guys both have that uh, menstruation <laughs> app on your phones? Just it just to- made me laugh. I was like, what do you think? We just, like, put our uteruses against each other? And no, then it's, it's like Mission Impossible. No, yeah. obviously, on my mark. Three, two, one. Obviously, there's a spell. Right. <laughs> There's a certain tea, yeah. an onion tea you have to drink. Mm-hmm. Onion tea and saffron and the craft I just on DVD. Was, it was I a read cute... somewhere that their periods attract bears. The bears can smell the menstruation. I mean, he does have a child, so he was probably kidding. But then also I was like, to be 100% honest with you, I don't know the science behind it. I just know that if I spend enough time with another woman, our periods come at the same time. I don't know why or how, but it happens. Because God hates us. Probably. All right, well, let us know when that happens, by the way. I will. Because until then, we're all going to be in in, uh, rapt suspense. Okay. All right. I'm going to break here. If you want to send me a text, 35192. To do that, alancoxshow.com for everything else, and we'll be back. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMM.